Hi, my name is Kathy Gallowitz. I'm a career retired Air Force veteran. I grew up as a Navy dependent. It's my life's calling to equip civilians to become veteran champions. It was my life's calling to build a statewide outreach office for the Ohio National Guard. That's where I learned about how important clergy are, as well as military ministries, to help support our military connected people. I'm new to Arizona. My husband and I came here because of the sunshine mountains and the truly, truly veteran friendly state, veteran friendly nature of the state. My husband's a combat veteran. I'm not. So being with him has given me a lot of insight as to how combat veterans might feel. I'm also the author of Beyond Thank You for Your Service, the Veteran Champion Handbook for Civilians. So let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about how and what a military ministry is. Okay, I work for the Arizona Coalition for Military Families as a spe special projects consultant. It's my pleasure to be on board with this initiative. Today, we're going to talk about why veterans need support, the unique and important role of the faith community, what is a military or veteran ministry, how to start one, what is the Be Connected Faith Network, and what's next? How can you get involved? You know, it's real easy. So veterans face some challenges, certainly. Uh, we've heard of veterans of yesteryear who have unresolved struggles, but recent research shows that of the 2.6 million Iraq and Afghanistan veterans, really about half will need support. What does that look like? Well, overall, about 55% feel disconnected from civilian life. You know, there is a difference between military and civilian culture. A half to one fourth feel frustrated with social functioning, just knowing how to function uh, in general uh, because of the language differences and the value differences sometimes. Productivities, finding jobs can be a challenge. Getting involved in the community, although veterans certainly are civic assets, they're not really sure how or where to contribute or where they feel most comfortable. For the purposes of this presentation, what's most important on this slide is that 40% of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans have difficulty finding meaning or purpose or getting in touch with their spirituality. And as I mentioned, veterans from yesteryear's conflicts also some may have some unresolved issues that the faith community in particular can support. There are spiritual wounds of war and this particular subject matter expert, retired US Army Chief of Chaplains, Major General Douglas L. Carver, who I've had the pleasure to meet, shares these kinds of spiritual wounds of wars, feeling alienated from their God, isolated, confused over good and evil. We already talked about the loss of meaning and purpose, but hopelessness, guilt, shame, despair, and lack of trust are very common spiritual wounds of war. You've probably heard of moral injury. Again, it's not important that you know how to diagnose this or fully understand or really know how to treat it, but just to know that it exists and that it's defined as a result of a violation of deeply held beliefs. For instance, thou shalt not kill, and unfortunately, in the demands of combat, that is required. So moral injury, not PTSD, is increasingly acknowledged as the signature wound of this generation of veterans. And really what it is, is a bruise of the soul uh, akin to grief or sorrow with a lasting impact on individuals and their families. Again, the symptoms of moral injury are sorrow, grief, regret, shame, and alienation. Doesn't that sound like things a faith community could help address? And you've heard of PTSD. Now you know a little bit more about moral injury. And really the symptomology intersects right there in the blue anger, depression, anxiety, insomnia, nightmares, self-medication. 
Again, it's not important that you know how to diagnose it or treat it, but just know that it exists. And also know that not everybody has these things, okay? About two thirds of our society experiences trauma. So it's very likely that you'll probably meet a civilian with PTSD more so than you might a veteran. But yes, this is a fairly predictable consequence of war and one that the faith community can really help with. And you've heard about veteran suicide. It is the second leading cause of death for veterans. And 100% of them say that the primary motivation is just to decrease emotional pain. Gee, if we can help soften that emotional pain to the faith community, what a win-win. You might hear somebody saying, I'm a terrible person. I'm a burden on others. I can't take this anymore. You know, you don't have to be a counselor or a therapist to come alongside somebody and help them with some of these struggles and be willing to talk about, are you thinking about hurting yourself? There's some very simple interventions that anybody can make, but again, you don't have to be an expert. We really do need you to help our military connected people, in particular, our warriors transition all the way home. So why the faith community? What's unique about it? The faith community and in places of worship can really play a major role in post-military reintegration and in emotional healing of veterans. Why? because they exist in almost every community. And in some communities, there's multiple places of worship, right? Faith communities have specialized knowledge and tools to help veterans with their spiritual and psychological wounds. First and foremost, I think that faith communities are just ideal at creating a sense of belonging and practical everyday support, just coming alongside and living veterans' lives with them. And what does that do? it decreases veteran isolation, which is so easy to go to. Veteran, it's just so easy for people in pain, whether or not you're a veteran, to isolate. Faith communities are cross-generational, so there's people inside the place of worship that can connect with veterans of all ages. That's a beautiful thing. Moreover, clergy are readily trusted by service members, veterans, and their families, and more so, than behavioral health providers. I've heard a statistic that says that service members are five times more likely to trust a clergy member than a behavioral health provider. And oftentimes there's all kinds of great stuff already existing inside of a faith community. Uh, there's other ministries that are addressing needs of people in the faith community. Well, what do I mean by that? Look at this pastoral care that anybody can take advantage of. And these are often things that our veterans, service members, veterans, and their families struggle with. You know, reintegrating after deployment is tough on a marriage and the children. Transitions between military and civilian life is huge because there's a loss of identity. There's certainly stress during service and post-service. Substance abuse is the way that most of us use to mask our emotional pain. And so, you know, that is something that many people struggle with. Forgiveness and grief, again, that might be moral injury or soul injury. And then there's other spiritual and emotional concerns that faith communities are very well suited to address because why? They're already addressing them in many, many ways. So what is a military veteran ministry? Don't you love that picture? I met this Marine and his wife in Columbus, Ohio, when he was going to, um, I think it was ROTC there at Ohio State. So I just love sharing this people with you, sharing this, uh, this family with you. So a military veteran ministry is fundamentally a practical and grassroots group of people that's led by a volunteer to offer support, encouragement, and friendship. Those are our words at Vet Connect. My husband, Ed, and I moved to Arizona about 18 months ago. And within two months, I approached the senior pastor at this non-denominational church called Christ Church of Fountain Hills. And I said to the pastor, what are we doing 
in our congregation to support military families. And he looked right back at me immediately. And he said, you know what? Not much. And we need to do more. I raised my right hand and I said, I can help you with that. I was so excited. So for about a year or so, we at Vet Connect have been gathering and working to provide support, encouragement, and friendship and come alongside the military connected people in our congregation to address their needs. Uh, there's one particular lady, uh, and she has been interviewed in some of the other resources for the Be Connected Faith Network. She came alongside me and connect closely with the younger military families who had younger children. And she also is recruiting people outside the congregation to bring them into our Vet Connect. So this is a tremendous effort for the congregation as well as for the community and can be rooted in a particular denomination and or be non-denominational. Be non-denominational, you can be really creative. For us, for right now, because three out of the 10 of our families have are experiencing PTSD, we are studying the movie, We Are Stronger by Crew Military. And I, as a volunteer, using the leader facilitation book, I am facilitating this study. And we're all learning a great deal about what PTSD looks like, some of the struggles in recognizing it, the things the families go through, and some of the sources of healing that uh, the family can use to get through it. Another great part of a military ministry is just knowing your resources so that if you feel like you're getting in over your head, there is a, you know where to go to get help. And the primary place that you can go is be connected. And I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. But I want to emphasize that a volunteer leader is not a therapist or a counselor. They are someone who cares about military connected people, gets informed and knowledgeable, and provides consistency and support. And, and, and provide certainly leadership. So Be Connected offers all kinds of support to our military connected families. And if you as a volunteer leader feel like you're getting in over your head, it's as easy as picking up the phone, dialing that number and letting them know what you need. This is really your first line of defense for anything a military connected person could need. Do they need job assistance? Do they have some you know, potential mental health issues? Are they looking to connect other ways in the community? Call Be Connected. Other important aspects of a military ministry is to normalize trauma, right? So if within a congregation, we destigmatize trauma by talking about it, by sharing the prevalence of trauma and maybe some of the responses to trauma, then veterans won't feel like they're being singled out. So that's a tremendous thing that uh, a faith community can do, again, because two-thirds of us experience some sort of trauma in our lives. Uh, the beautiful thing about this ministry is it really is a ministry of presence, just coming alongside someone, praying with them. That's a huge component and listening. We all want to be heard, don't we, and feel like we're understood. That's a, a primary uh, human need. And so when you're listening to someone, you may ask some of these questions and really listen actively when you get feedback. How is it going? What is your, how is your adjustment coming along from, from military service or to the community? How's work and how can I support you? And really just start small, open-ended questions. Let the person take the conversation with they will, where they will. Don't really pry do not ask, have you ever shot anyone? That's just, just, it's too hard to talk about. People don't want to do it and it's not helpful. Um, and so really the best thing you can do is offer small, consistent doses of support over the long haul, heavily laced in listening. There's a lot of people continuing to deploy and uh, you can, as a, as a military ministry, support those who aren't in the congregation right now. 
a wonderful strategy is to build a military family support team, assigning liaisons to a family who's left behind, just so that they feel connected to and supported. You can display prayers on a prayer board. Look at that one so that they're visible. So that people in your congregation really kind of he can hear the heart and soul of the people and pray specifically for what their needs are. You can send care packages. You can send um, welcome home and or you can have welcome home and send off celebrations and put reminders in the bulletin to pray for deployed soldiers. So uh, we are currently sending one of our sailors well-wishing notes to try to help him know that he's remembered as he adjusts to a life on board ship. And so really supporting deployed personnel is just a, a beautiful thing for the service member and for their family. Coming alongside that family while they're left at home is really powerful. There's many things a military ministry can do. Here are just some pictures representing different activities. On the far left, you can have uh, any kind of meal for the families, for the community, for, you know, you know, we just love to gather and have food. The little boy there is uh, one of the sons of the members of our team. His, his father struggles with uh, PTSD. His wife is a member of Vet Connect. And so my husband took this young boy out fishing because his father is unable to come out of the house. And so we were just tickled to be able to do that. Look at the joy on this little guy's face. I mean, this is just one of many heartwarming activities you can do as you discover needs. Here, a chaplain is getting a blanket when he's uh, come home from deployment as a, as, a, as a thank you for his service. On the right are some gratitude ribbons that Vet Connect made at a women's conference and then we donated them to women veterans at the Phoenix VA. So the, the faces of a military ministry are many. You use your ingenuity, your creativity, and your leadership skills to do what, uh, what is of interest to your members. And you can just make a big impact coming alongside them, showing that you care and support them and developing really nice friendships. Remember, small act of kindness mean more than the big events. Again, picking up the phone, responding when people are afraid, responding with words of encouragement when people are struggling, boy, that goes a long, long way. Remember, you are not a therapist or a counselor. You are a volunteer and it's not your job to fix the problem. I also want to emphasize that as a volunteer, you do this in partnership with the pastor or the clergy member in your place of worship. The, the idea is that the clergy member will empower you to be the, the frontline leader, so to speak, but certainly you need to do that in partnership with clergy. So let's talk briefly about how to start one of these things. Like I did, I went to the senior pastor and I pretty much started uh, exploring what was going on. And I said, you know, how are we, how does our congregation support military families? And if you don't get that immediate let's go response, you can start slowly asking about how do we find our military members, connect with them, support them. Just don't give up. Keep asking questions. And how can, what can we do to make, to simply make their lives easier? And every, do everything you can to, to be in partnership with the clergy member. And more often than not, Clergy member one is support military members, military families, but they don't have the, the time or the resources necessarily to do it themselves. So if they find a passionate, willing, capable volunteer who's willing to do it, I can't imagine that they won't come alongside you behind you and do what they can to support you. Um, but again, this is it's important to remember that they're just super busy folk and really need you to accept responsibility and leadership for this important initiative. So of course, you have to find your service members or your military connected people. Again, it can be the spouses, the grandmothers, the aunts, the uncles, just anybody who loves our military. Find them, you know, start showing that you care about them, bring them together, and then organize them and figure out what we wanna do. This is a picture of our Vet Connect group. 
uh, that I'm there really, but most of them are just becoming my very good friends. And so it's, it's really a joy for me to share this with you. So it's really very simple. It's not rocket science. It's people science, but you got to find them, bring it together and just keep trying to develop relationships because those relationships develop very slowly and, and can be, um, it can be a little bit challenging at first, but just keep trying, building trust and, and meeting needs and being consistent. So let's transition now to the Be Connected Faith Network. The Arizona Coalition for Military Families has had a faith committee for um, about eight years or so to really foster engagement of the faith community. On June 9th, we had a public launch or a relaunch, if you will, or an official organized launch of the Be Connected Faith Network. And our vision is to create volunteer-led military ministries that provide grassroots and practical support that are equipped to refer military-connected people to the right resources at the right time. The Arizona Coalition for Military Families over the last decade or more, since 2009, has built an incredible collaboration and infrastructure statewide with agencies, employers, and faith community healing resources to provide this kind of right resources at the right time. And so now what we want to do is cultivate volunteer leaders inside places of worship that know about these resources and feel supported and ready to develop their own ministry just like Vet Connect, because there are scads of healing resources available, but most people don't know about them. And many faith communities aren't necessarily thinking specifically about the needs of military people. Although they love military people, they may not have specific ministries in place to address them. We want to change that. With your help, we will. So what could you do? This is just gives you a, a laundry list of ideas, but I hope you will consider and figure out which one makes the most sense to you. I hope you will go back and take the information presented here in this presentation, and you will discuss with your faith leaders what the opportunity might look like. Ask for their support. Use some of those questions I recommended earlier. Ask for a presentation to be made at your place of worship. If there's several clergy, senior pastors, several of your faith community leaders that have to be exposed to this and weigh in, ask for the Arizona Coalition to come out and make a presentation to your faith community or to your denomination or to your military ministry in your community. We want to get the word out. Please help us. Look inside your place of worship for a volunteer military minister. Maybe you don't feel led to do that yourself, but maybe you know someone who's particularly passionate about supporting military families that might be. Please be on the lookout for that person and ask if they might be willing to get more informed and get more involved. We've got all different ways for people to get involved. You can be an individual champion or an organizational partner. And either way, you'll receive training information, best practice information, resources, and you'll be able to connect with other faith communities that are already doing this amazing work. Because there are very, there are quite a few faith communities, not only in Arizona, but across the nation, who have military ministries like we've discussed in place. We intend to start hosting quarterly meetings to bring people together either virtually or in person so that we can share opportunities and challenges and develop best practices and encourage one another to really do this important work. The Arizona Coalition for Military Families has resource navigator training that every citizen can take. We hope that maybe you'll start right there with um, taking that resource training so that you really understand kind of how to connect more to the, to the resources that are available. And you can go, you can find that information by going to the Arizona Coalition for Military Families website. And then there's also a lot of information. Many of them are on the um, Be Connected Faith Community website 
about how you can offer ways to support healing uh, through your military ministry. There's just scads of resources. And so this community at ArizonaCoalition.org is the primary email for asking for more information. There are job forms that can be used, although it may be difficult for you to copy this from this presentation, but you can certainly ask for the job form because that's where you indicate what kind of specific information you might want. And then this is the Be Connected Faith Network Hive, which is a mini social media networking site where you can talk uh, about different things you're excited about, things you've experienced. And so these are brand new ideas and brand new initiatives. So really from this slide, if you want to get engaged, you're not sure where to start, email community at ArizonaCoalition.org. Today in this presentation, we've talked about the challenges that veterans face, the um, what a military ministry is and why the faith community is so important, giving you some basic steps about how to start a military ministry and giving you specific ways that you can get involved and start making a difference today. We encourage you to get involved. We're excited to come work with you on this exciting project. And we know that working together, we can really promote emotional healing of our service members, veterans, their families, and all military connected people. Because don't most of us just want a place to belong, to be heard, to be understood? We kind of owe that to those who have served and sacrificed so much for us, don't we? Please come alongside us. Thank you for your attention today. We look forward to getting to know you. We thank you for your interest and we just want you to know how valuable you are in helping us address this important need. Please reach out to us at community at ArizonaCoalition.org. My name is Kathy Gallowitz. Thank you for your time.